there's no standardized battery report that we can get now around the world. There just isn't. So imagine, entertain me, in five years' time, six years' time, you're going to go and buy a five, six, seven, eight year old BYD Dolphin. It's got 100,000 kilometers on it. Entirely reasonable situation to find yourself in. But you just need more to, before you transfer the money than a range on the dashboard. You need more than that. So what do you do if you're not a geek? An article written by Motor Traders Online shows that 45% of vehicle buyers would be more likely to bid on a vehicle for sale if there is a battery health document with that car. There is no standardized blanket battery report anywhere on the planet, like in the UK or America or Australia, where people can just get the printout of the battery health. That's not a thing. We're still kind of in this early stage where we have to know what to do. And you plug an OBD two meter uh, dongle in the car and, and use an app, for example. Bear in mind, 85% of people don't even think about doing that. So 15% of people do. The rest of the people that are buying used EVs don't know about it. They don't care enough. They're happy to just see the range. So people are largely buying used EVs blind these days. And it hasn't been an issue basically because all the used cars now are in great shape. We, we've never had this before. We've never had a used EV market with all this choice that's, you know, 2018, 2019 EVs bl like blossomed, majorly just boomed all over the planet. So that is why we're in the first few years now, six or seven years now, uh, people have been going to buy the brand new electric cars. Now they're coming through. We've got used electric cars. It's expected that over the next 10 years, we will start to hear not just people buying a used electric car that's three years old or one that has 100,000 kilometers on it, but actually ones with broken cells or a bit of an issue or something that's been crashed into at the side and repaired but the battery's got a big dent in it weird stuff like that we will start to hear hit and miss stories simply because the used car market is just getting much larger very very quickly so because all the electric cars that are used are currently still just a handful of years old it's kind of a non-topic they don't really exist in, in, in any serious number with any consequence so this is the first time we've ever had a used market with electric vehicles in it in big numbers so we're learning as we go we're all in it together so 51 percent of people who were asked these questions uh, in this survey said they look for some form of documentation when they buy an electric car of those who were asked a battery health certificate would help improve the retail value of an EV, according to 63% of those people, and 33% said it possibly would help with faster sales. So clearly, a lot of people think it will help speed up sales and give a lot of confidence to somebody uh, who wants to buy an electric car. Food for thought, I've got a couple of questions. If you could, please answer them. So what do you do, or what have you done when you've gone to buy an electric car that's used? What checks did you do? What questions did you ask? What did you look out for uh, to figure out uh, if you were gonna buy the car or not and to give the, the battery a bit of a tick in your mind? Also, two questions here. What would be the highest kilometers or age that you would consider buying an electric vehicle without any data when you buy, buy an electric vehicle? So right now, 85% of all EV sales happen with no formal battery check or printout of data at all. So effectively, it's a blind sale. It's kind of like buying a car, but not looking for oil under the engine, if you had a petrol. You know, something like that. A five-year-old Fiat, and you go to buy it, and you don't test drive it, you don't do anything, you don't look at the engine, you don't look at the engine oil underneath, you don't check anything. So if you're in Queensland, Australia, for example, can we get the RECQ to come out and give a car a check just to do some sort of OBD2 scanner thing underneath for us if we don't know what we're doing? Could we buy an OBD2 scanner and an app on our phones? Should this become common knowledge? You've got to imagine that most people just aren't tech savvy at all, and they probably won't even know what an OBD2 port is. You know, this is a bit of a thing. It's a learning curve for everybody. What do we do? It can be tricky to find data. So not all companies will just tell you on the thing on the screen, 97% uh, uh, SOH, for example. That just doesn't really exist on mass with all different car brands. So you've got to either go to some place or ask the dealer or use an app or an OBD2 port. So tools like Avilu 
OBD11, they're pretty decent. They will give you things like battery temperature, uh, history, uh, sale balance, uh, capacity loss if the vehicle supports it, not all of them do. If you want a good one for a BYD, I recommend VGate iCar Pro. I'll put it on screen now for you. It's only about $12, $15, something like that, and you can use it with different apps, for example, uh, Talk Pro or Car Scanner Pro. I've actually got both of those on my phone. Uh, I don't know if any of you out there watching remember Leaf Spy. Pretty crucial if you wanted to look at the, uh, you know, any Nissan Leaf for sale still gets used all the time now. A simple tip, and it's really not giving you the answer or a comprehensive view of the battery, but only ever test drive an electric car when it's got a full battery, and then you will see on the guessometer what it says is the range, and that will give you some sort of indication. The RACQ wrote a post online on their website, which is a very good website, by the way. Uh, our anxiety is often overblown because on EVs with over 120,000 kilometers, they still typically have, on average, over 90% capacity. Pickles in Queensland also said that over half of all EV sales are to private customers like, like you and me, like us. And it's somewhat of a blind transaction for some customers because they don't have the skills or know-how to extrapolate the data from the battery. So effectively, they're buying it blind, or there's an assumption or a sort of a trust there that it's only two years old, it's probably gonna be fine. So you can ask for a dealer report if you go to say BYD or you go somewhere and you want to buy a second-hand car, you can just ask them to give you a piece of paper with it on there and print it out and let them deal with it. Just ask them, that could be a bit of a rule that you do. In Australia, a company called Pickles said its EV battery health assurance process has tested over 2,500 vehicles across all the major Australian cities. Uh, with findings that show even a four-year-old EV, on average, has at least 93% battery health. So that's kind of a good thing to know. The survey found that average battery health exceeds 90%, even for vehicles over four years old with 120,000 or more on the odometer, which is good. So basically, if it's got a handful of years on its back, you can just sort of trust roughly that it's going to have 90% if you can't be bothered thinking about this anymore. Uh, Hyundai's EVs tested uh, the best, actually, with over 99% of the original capacity, and BYDs were very close. They were 98.6% uh, at 120,000 miles, which seems pretty good. I mean, sh shockingly good. I mean, I have heard similar numbers in the past, but that was not from any sort of large-scale study or anything like that. So that's pretty, that's pretty good, and it's from a credible source. So... Tesla's long-standing benchmark was actually pretty good, but they have just been beaten effectively by that data. So can I ask you as well to consider joining on YouTube members if you enjoy the channel or you want to support the work that I do? You're also very welcome to join on Patreon. I have a few tiers on Patreon. There's a free one. You can do that. That's completely fine. Or you can uh, pay a couple of dollars a month and there are some longer deep dive videos and some live streams and that sort of thing. So Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate your time. My name is Ben Alexander, and uh, I make videos all the time about the world's EV news, and uh, I try to make them as interesting as possible. Uh, a bit varied sometimes, but uh, yeah, thank you for watching.